Hello everyone, this is Scott Lowe with IGN here to bring you a video review of the Razer Blade, Razer's new 14-inch gaming laptop for 2014 and a successor to last year's Razer Blade as well. Uh, now, we praised last year's model for its portability and design, but uh, criticized it for its inferior display. Well, Razer has been listening to not only ours, but your feedback as well, and uh, applied a lot of improvements to this model. Now, in terms of design, it's very, very similar. In fact, uh, almost identical from just, you know, first glance. It's still got a black aluminum finish. It's uh, slightly thicker, but only marginally so. Uh, and basically all the major facets are the same. So it'll have USB 3.0 on the sides, it has a, you know, external power supply, it's got HDMI output, all of that uh, you know, from the exterior, but once you open it, you'll see that the biggest change is of course the display. But before we get into that, uh, you know, there's been a few tweaks to the trackpad, it's a little more responsive, it's, uh, you, know, uh, you can make gesture controls in a lot of the same ways that you can with a MacBook. Um, you know, to navigate the main interface as well as games if you want to. And of course they have the Chiclet keyboard, which, uh, you know, is ideal for typing, not so much for games, but more than sufficient, uh, very responsive, but, you know, obviously if you are a hardcore PC gamer and you want precision and responsiveness, you might want to consider an external one or just going to the traditional desktop. Now, the one problem with the design, and, it, and it's, it was an issue last year and it's continued to be a problem, is the finish, which actually showcases smudge and grease and other you know, dirt very, very well. So uh, if you see on the chassis here, there are some, you know, even just white marks from the cleaning cloth that we used. So uh, if you're using it for an extended period or even like kind of the first touch, it will start showing smudges and it's really difficult after you know just opening it to keep it in pristine con condition which is you know uh, a huge huge problem now the overall design is obviously lifted a lot from uh, apple but it kind of lacks some of that of attention to detail as i mentioned you know there's the smudging on the chassis uh, the speaker grading is a little cheap there's some you know smaller finer touches that aren't as high quality as Apple's, but it still has that same premium price. But of course, the star of this year's model is the display. Razer took all the feedback from us last year and uh, you know improved it considerably. It is no longer a matte LCD. It is now a uh, 3200 by 1800 high resolution display with a touch screen. It's got a glass front. It's using IGZO and IPS panel technology, which makes viewing angles better, color represent representation more brighter and more vibrant, and overall is quite possibly one of the best uh, displays we've seen on a laptop available today. It even bests the MacBook Pro with Retina display in terms of overall pixel density, because again, this is a 14 inch display, and you're packing that, packing that many pixels into you know, that form factor. It's really crisp, really sharp, uh, and it makes you know, browsing Windows 8 fantastic. Now, as I mentioned, it is a touch display, so that's uh, you know a little impractical for something like a laptop. It's not a tablet. You're not going to be using it one-handed. So, you know, poking at your display is in favor of using uh, a mouse or a trackpad is probably not going to happen. In fact, over the span of the time that I've had this laptop, I haven't used the touchscreen basically for anything, just because it just seemed totally unnecessary. Uh, unfortunately, that also adds extra cost to the model, which uh, you know I would prefer something a little more restrained and just using a traditional non-touch display and passing that savings down to the consumer. But of course, the big question becomes, how does this affect gameplay? Now, underneath, they have a GTX 870M processor, which powers uh, you know all the games and this all these pixels. And for the most part, it's really, really good. So for 1080p, uh, you know, 60 frames per second gaming, you will have no problem with any of the modern games out there today. I tried Battlefield 4, uh, Bioshock Infinite, Crisis, all of it. And it runs perfectly at either ultra or max out settings uh, at 60 frames or higher. Now when you crank that up to the native resolution, 3200 by 1800, that frame rate drops considerably. And in fact, you have to scale back textures and graphics quality to low levels to even get a passable 30 frames per second. So it's a really kind of overkill and, and Razer has really packed in a panel that isn't really on par with the graphics processing technology for laptops today. So it is a huge drawback. There's also other elements of the design when you're playing games that are still persistent over last year. The surface, te surface temperatures get really high when you're playing. It actually kind of starts to burn a little while when you touch the aluminum surface, which is obviously less than ideal, especially when you're using a keyboard as opposed to a controller or uh, an external mouse or control input method. So that is less than ideal. And uh, overall battery life is less than last year, which is actually a little bit of a step back. 
You get about an hour of gameplay, about four to five hours of just casual computing, whether it be web browsing, video editing, whatever. Um, and obviously that'll vary a little bit as you tweak your brightness settings and efficiencies. Now the other big issue is cost. Razer obviously targets a very premium market with the Razer Blade, and uh, the new model is no different. So uh, this one starts for $2,200 for 128 gigs of st solid state storage, which is commendable, but then when you crank it up to a more desirable level, the more ideal config, whether it be 256 gigabytes or 512, you can get up to $2,700 uh, you know, for the maximum amount of storage capacity. Obviously the other specs are locked, you still have 8 gigs of RAM, you still get the same quad-core processor, none of that can really vary depending on which model you choose, it's all about storage capacity, but it can get very, very expensive. But in spite of its flaws, the Razer Blade is still one of the best looking and best performing gaming laptops on the market, at least in its category. You know, at this size, you're gonna be hard put to find something more portable but more powerful. And obviously with a display like this, it is gorgeous to use for you know, general computing. Uh, and when you scale it down to 1080p, great for gaming. My only wish is Razer had focused on an exceptional 1080p panel rather than prematurely making the jump to 3200 by 1800. Stunning as it may be, it's a little impractical for gaming, and obviously by t scaling it back and focusing on 1080p, they would have you know, made it a little more inexpensive con for consumers. But of course, this is only just an at-a-glance review of the Razer Blade. If you want full details, including benchmarking, stats, and more, head over to IGN.